All right, guys, here we go again. It's 1 a.m. It's pitch black. Where did we leave off? Okay, so we've got a mission here. He's still got blood plagues. She's slightly plagued. We are really going to have to watch. We're going to have to keep really keep an eye on our blood, blood plague situation here. Because it's very common. So we lost... We lost our gardener. We had a gardener, didn't we? I wanted to check this. Okay, so minus 40 injury, plus 45 max health, and she comes with some morale. So Alyssa, we want to keep an eye on. But really, yeah, it's just we just got to really watch everyone's blood plague situation. We've got four plague cures. We need one more to make a blood plague cure. For our guy. And we've got a few guns, which is pretty decent. And this. Let's take that and we'll take a... That takes ten rounds, six rounds, but these are... These are more heavy duty than this. Well, not by much, though. We can repair this as well. We've only got two rounds for that, though. So we're going to take the, one of these, whichever one's, this one's got a faster fire rate. Which one's got more range? They're both the same on range. Okay, we'll take this then. Someone's been reported missing. Would you take a look around? And I think I'm going to stick with these. Oops. Yeah, I'll just take this and I'll use it as an emergency. Got a feeling I want to put one of these in each car as well. So if the green screen's blowing around a bit, it's a little bit um windy. I am today. Okay, so let's get an idea what we need to do. I think for now, along with collecting plague samples, hmm. along with collecting plague samples, we need to be focusing on and we can't make this stuff until we have a chemist. I'm definitely feeling a lot better. Anyone got work for me? Also, it's night time. So we're not going far right now. That's a juggernaut, I think. Just want to see if we have any skill books. I don't think we do. No, we don't. Just going to put these in the car. And there was an ultralight backpack just across the road. This needs a light vehicle upgrade kit. I don't mind so much about not upgrading this just yet because I would like to make use of the survey function a bit more. Or did we already do that? No, we didn't cover everywhere. We must have got interrupted. I think we were doing a trip around, weren't we? So we, we've kind of got to hover around the base until it gets a bit lighter. For safety reasons. Hmm. 
Also, I'm wondering if a if a uh, outpost. Uh, A watchtower would be better here. I feel like it might be. But also for safety reasons. Yeah, I'm going to build a watchtower. I think it was in this house. Oh yeah, and I, I realised that I actually Looks picked... pretty empty to me. I, I picked up the meds. No, it wasn't here. Where was it? It was out the front, somewhere. Was it? Can't remember where it is now. Okay, maybe we just forget about it. I shouldn't run, should I? I should walk slowly. Oh, I didn't bring any health kits. There we go. Oh, it's not much. Not many zombies around. The coast isn't clear. Few more meds is not so bad. <laughs> this guy needs backup, but I'm not too keen on going there in the night. So this is literally 3 a.m., guys. Not good. If that feral tackles me, I'm toast. Blood ferals in the darkness. Now, the blood ferals you would see because of the... I'm telling you, this Actually, no, you don't see their glowing head until you break it open, do you? Like the second shot. To the head, you know. Bloaters, I think you would see because their bellies glow. Excuse me. Alright, now where? Maybe if I take the car. It will be light soon. Paul's got a missing friend. I don't honestly I don't even wanna like go for a drive, to be honest. Might try and make it across the road. If the feral comes, we'll just bolt back to house. Back to base. I feel like it would be pretty easy to lose your bearings, though. At least it would for me. Like, without having this yellow marker on the map, I feel like you could get pretty lost quite easily. Maybe not here, right next to your base, but if you wandered too far away... Thank God they don't see the light. 
I thought about adding in the increased zombie sight as well. Where they can see like double, double the distance. But I thought, you know, I'm just being a bit too cruel to myself there, I think. By doing stuff like that. And it, it's nice if there's like even, you know, a slight kind of remote chance of me lasting a little while, at least in this series. Oh, goodness. Nothing of use. But I do have a mod in, right? It's called uh, Everyday Morale Recruit. So apparently on Green Zone, which I don't really remember if this happened, but at 6.30 a.m., you, you get a new potential recruit show up at your base. And you can obviously recruit them for free. So the mod, well, basically brings a new recruit to your doorstep every morning if you want them so uh i think i might you know if i accept like two or three recruits i'll probably remove the mod because it feels a little bit overpowered but i just like the idea of people occasionally showing up to your base which they do anyway i think later later on no place to put that i guess these things would probably be quite useful too firecrackers just give me a second. Okay, yeah, I'm still a little bit sniffly, so if I'm pausing the video, it's because I'm blowing my nose or sneezing a lot or something. Oh, yeah, there's a feral around. I need a break. It's starting to get a bit lighter, I think. The morning comes. Yeah, here we go. Now we're talking. We ain't alone, of course. Press the wrong key. That it. We need to focus on blood plague cures, don't we? Here we go. Here cometh the light, the way and the truth shall be revealed, and the death, of course, of course, the death, and the dead, and the dead shall be revealed. Jesus was literally a zombie, wasn't he? Like, arisen from the dead, you know? He was basically a zombie. Like, this will slow me down. The world's most famous zombie, I suppose. Blessed be and all that. The resurrection, you know? Pretty powerful stuff, that. The coast isn't clear. No wonder we're so obsessed. <laughs> With zombies. No luck in here. As a culture, you know. Well, we found everything we can possibly find. Box of tampons. I guess they are pretty, uh, pretty luxurious items in the middle of an apocalypse. Yeah, we might make our way back over here. Don't get me wrong, like, I don't mind tangoing with ferals in, uh, fair circumstances. Like, the light, in the daylight. 
I can't tango with a feral. Maybe not if I don't have to. Speaking of which, fuck's sake. The armor's gone. I don't usually take them out from a distance like that. I don't want him sitting there like that anyway. I'd rather he was he, he burst, you know. All right, so it's daytime, so we should get out there now. <clears throat> get scavenging away from the base. We're pretty set, set to rock and roll. I don't know whether I'm a big fan of this rebar. I think I'd rather a bladed weapon. Take one of these. They're the same weapon. They are too. Just a second. All right, let's rock and roll. So I noticed the green screen's been messing around a bit. I've got to try to just basically to let it go because it really, if I focus on it too much, it becomes obsessive trying to get rid of all of the little things. All right. Anyway, so it's daytime. Let's go have a little look at. I'm headed your way. Some Hold of these the missions. That's good to hear. Who's that person? You have a nice backpack. We kind of need to be focused on hey. gathering a plague sample. I already got all I can handle. Hey. Hi there. I'm also going to take that gun. Hi there. Hi there. She injured. Yeah, she's a bit. Doesn't this remove injuries now? Yeah, it does. Maybe just slowly, is it? Supplies aren't looking too bad. Let's try and get a move on, make the most of the light while we have it. That darkness issue is an issue, you know. It It really limits us at night time. Thought I was going to hit a bloater then. Sticking around here too long would not be smart. We do need to be really careful with these bloody plague zombies. We'll find ourselves in a lot of trouble if we get too much blood plague at this point. Hey, what's up? Come on, make yourself at home. Cool. Are we going into plague territory? Yeah, okay. So let's have a little bit of a scout now for some more plague samples.
Honestly, a screamer could be good right now. I got an offer to make you guys. Can we talk here? We do really need these samples. Honestly, I don't think I've ever played this game before and been like, wow, we really need samples right now. You know, usually they're so plentiful. Do I not have a weapon? Did I not pick up a... Oh, I swapped it out, didn't I? Okay, anyway, we picked one up. So let's get a play cure made right now. Looks like nobody else is home. But with a play card around, that won't last. Work. That's the wrong key. Still do that sometimes. Is that it? I think I've searched everywhere I can. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where I had not realized that my microphone audio decided to quit on me. I don't know why. So, I decided, after reviewing the footage, that I still wanted to upload the video. So I would do a little bit of a commentary. So I've been having a lot of fun with State of Decay 2 lately. It has drawn me back into its deathly grip. I think what did it was I saw on the Nexus, which is the modding site for State of Decay. Or the main modding site. It's actually the main modding site for most games. I saw that Darkseid and the Walking Dead mods and some of the main kind of mods that I've looked into in the past had been updated. And, I, you know, I just decided I want to jump in and just have a little bit of a play. This is going back about a month ago and I haven't really stopped playing it since. Not quite a month, maybe two weeks, three, maybe three weeks. But anyway, the channel is back in, back in relatively full swing. And I do intend to get into a little bit of Fallout 4 and back to the Bioshock series right sometime soon. You got something for me? Okay. So where are we at here? Picking up a couple of supplies. Nice comfy chair to sit on. It's always a nice bonus to the morale. This will slow me down. Nothing more yeah, at this point here. I'm kind of weighing up. The, uh, the fact that we're on a dread zone map kind of means that there's plenty of supplies. But with the mods that we've got installed, it's quite difficult and quite risky. It's almost impossible to get supplies at night time or just too risky to get supplies at night time. So we're limited to gathering supplies in the day and because of the fact that we don't spend influence on outposts or bases. Uh, we, we tend to end up with quite a bit of extra influence, which we might as well spend. I need a breather. Because that's what it's for, after all. I 
Yeah, there were some interesting moments in this gameplay. Overall. What's up? Let's make a deal. Sure. Not really sure why my microphone decided to quit. Strange. It's always very unnerving too because when you enter into recording a video, you you've always got in the back of your head that at some point your microphone might just shut off by itself and kind of ruin the experience of or not necessarily ruin it, but damage the experience of creating content. So I could switch to my other microphone, it's just not as good quality audio. It's never cut out before in this game. Very strange. These plague samples are like liquid gold at this point in the playthrough. I've never really worried about them so much before. Even on other lethal zone maps. I guess it's because of the fact that every single bite gives us full blood plague. Or every single um, infected zombie bite. Red, you know, blood, uh, plague zombie. And I, I quite enjoy the logic behind it because you think that, you know, you have these different types of zombies and so it makes you kind of think that some the zombies that aren't infected with blood plague are maybe fresh because they may be freshly turned because otherwise why are there different types? I don't know if the law for that has already been revealed but why are there zombies that aren't plague zombies? And there are zombies that are plague zombies. Isn't it the plague, the blood plague virus that's created the zombies in the first place? As far as we understand the law to be? So my thinking is you know, if you get bitten or scratched by a regular zombie it doesn't have blood plague because it's still at a, an early stage of evolution. As if all of the non-plague zombies are evolving into plague zombies eventually. And so that's why when you get scratched or bitten by a plague zombie, you get the plague. Anyway, it's kind of a little self-made law logic. But I quite like it. It certainly adds a new challenge. A new level of challenge to the game. I've played a lot with the instant kill uh, setup where every bite kills you. But this mechanic is taken from the dark side of The Walking Dead because in that mod, when you get bitten by a plague zombie, you get instant full blood plague and you have to amputate a limb. There's no cures available on the map. You have to amputate a limb like in The Walking Dead series. And then... You can only amputate yourself once. If you get bitten again, the character is done for. There's no cure, and there's no way to amputate a second limb. Oh, look, so I just took the feature of the instant blood plague bite. I did not want to know that. what makes plague territory smell this bad. To be honest, I probably would take the other feature too, actually, whereby you can't craft blood plague cures. You know, the amputation mechanic. That could be quite interesting, actually. Maybe we'll do that in a future playthrough. Maybe we'll do it in this one. Ooh, that could be good. Maybe we'll introduce that for the next episode. That could be fun. Yeah, welcome to the apocalypse. So your character is allowed to get the plague once, essentially. Bitten once. Found some quite nice guns here. Not sure what I'm saying right now. Oh yeah, I was, I was explaining here. This little uh, sim the symbols here is from a mod that 
rates the gun's rarity. I think it's called weapon rarity or something like that. And uh, you see the stars beneath the weapon. The higher the stars, the more amount of stars there are, the rarer the weapon is. This is quite a recent mod too. It's a few weeks old, I think, on the Nexus. So if there's a gun with like one or two stars, it's not so rare. But then you get the four stars, five stars. Don't know if there's six. There is, I think. I think there's six stars for the rarest. So 50 mods we've got active here. Roughly 50 mods. And uh, we haven't had any crashes. The whole time I've been playing the game, I haven't had any crashes. Locked up tight. Damn. So the mods are quite stable. They don't always work the way that I think they're intended to work. Can't do it. Maybe all of the features aren't present. That's nice. Ish. But they work well enough. I'm gonna need a lighter load soon. Make a deal. Sure. Always nice to have an enclave okay. member following you. Around, but we can't Instant the trading. Close by. So here we're counting the plague hearts and I think it's at this point that I realize I think there are 19 plague hearts on the map and we started out with 13. So obviously the growing threat mod that introduces a new plague heart, it says on the website on the Nexus page, the mod page, that it introduces a new plague heart every morning every it says every morning a, a new plague heart may spawn which to me says it may or may one plague heart may or may not spawn but so far i think we've passed two nights in the game and there are now six more plague hearts on the map so i was explaining here in the video uh, that's quite shocking and scary and really actually threw me out a little bit a lot when I first realized exactly what that means for this playthrough because <laughs> the game has spawned I think we've passed two nights I guess we may have passed three nights it's either spawned two play cards a day or it's spawned three extra play cards each day and that means very soon we're going to be overrun <laughs> by play cards if we don't start basically speed running them and as a, as I was explaining, the reason that's the reason I chose a dread map, a dread zone map, is because I didn't want to start out with thirty play guards and have it, you know, get up to like fifty. I wanted to start with less so that there was an actual chance of me completing the mission, uh, completing the the map, killing all the play guards. But if it's going to spawn two or three a day. Even two a day is tough. We're trying to fit in three play cards a day and that would just keep us uh, balanced. Here I would maintain an equilibrium. Thank you so much. Well, Don't stress it. it really started to sink in that we're, we've got a real challenge on our hands hey, here. Nice Come on in. Hang out. I can remove the mod so temporarily for a day or so and let us catch up on a few and then put it back in. But actually, I think that might have 
issues of its own, as I explained in another right. video. Hola, but it, in one of my playthroughs, when I first installed the mod, it reset my nine plague hearts right. back to zero. Nine uh, killed plague hearts back to zero out of 30. Hey, yo. So it's a bit of a concern, to be honest. But we'll keep going with it and see how it turns out. If it becomes undoable, we'll just, uh, I guess, reassess what we're doing. But I do like the idea that the plague is spreading, because it would. You know, there's a reason that 7 or 10 or 13 or 30 or whatever, however many plague hearts have spawned on the map across time, because the plague is spreading, the plague hearts spread. They spread their influence, they spread the disease. Here we go. It's one of those moments where it really feels like the game is out to get you. Right here. I gotta rest a sec. And when we get home, on, people, let's fight. we realize we've just walked into a zombie siege, a base siege. Take care of yourself now. So we have a juggernaut to deal with. And a base siege. I was trying to lure him away here. Didn't work. Clearly. Glad I built that watchtower. Dear God, I'm tired. No more of that. Okay, the creeps are on top of our base right now. So we don't have any plague cures at this point. We've already got one member of our community in the infirmary to stop his blood plague from growing any further, and we've just contracted blood plague again. But I think we have the... Yeah, I think we have enough plague samples for a blood plague cure at this point. Or did we just make one? Either we've already just made one. <clears throat> and there we see we have two. Because one of the mods that I have installed actually produces two plague cures or five plague samples. So we can cure both of our community members. But we're in the I middle of dealing with a siege. Up. We can all breathe now. Thank goodness. So that wasn't so bad. We also have a new uh, recruit. Who? Hanging around. Wanting us to recruit him. You're going to be fine, okay? Everything's going to be fine. And he's from the Everyday Morale Recruit mod. But as you'll soon see... I start to feel like this mod is a bit overpowered for what I'm going for here. So we're looking for the second Blood Plague victim. Hey there. To give her the cure It'll as well. Be over soon, so we've huh? just used up all of our samples. We're going to make you all better, hun. Oh, I never knew you cared. But at least all of our community members are safe. All right, guys, I'm ready to get back in the game. And I think we get a couple plague samples now, anyway. We can't really see much about her skills. She gives us negative three morale and has a less wits experience and can become frustrated easily. He's not the best, although I don't mind the minus 66% standing rewards because it just slows down the pace a little bit. But um, 
He does have a couple of decent skills there at the top. Vigil Guard. She gives us plus three morale. So I think we go to talk to Fu now. Maybe we just get set up a little bit first. Here he is. I could use a place to stay. So this is where I realize, okay, we have a second Red Talon recruit. And it's starting to feel a little bit overpowered. So I decided here, Truth is, okay, I'm, I'm sure happy to take a couple of recruits here. from this mod. Hey, but every day a new recruit will show up in the morning at 6.30. And for the last two days, it's been Red Talon. And uh, it hasn't happened like that. Any other time I've used this mod, they've just been regular recruits. So uh, I decided to de-implement the mod from now on for the rest of the playthrough. Because just getting a new Red Talon recruit show up at your door every morning doesn't really make any sense. And two, it's uh, very overpowered. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, we do get two new play cards on the map every morning, two or three. So perhaps the Red Talon recruit for this particular playthrough isn't so overpowered, considering how much quicker and better they will do for taking play cards out. It's got a very interesting balance to it, this uh, this mod pack. An, an unexpected kind quarter. of balance. Yeah, that might be... It might be worthwhile. You know, we can kind of roleplay that this particular region has a, a heightened uh, capacity or a heightened disease, heightened level of contracted disease and it's spreading faster here than anywhere else in the region so the red talon operators have been sent in to try to quell and push back against the virus as it grows because it's growing so rapidly Down to the last magazine i think there. i like that i think i quite like that idea because in all honesty although red talon are a little bit overpowered to get a new recruit every day that's if that's what this mod is going to do. At the same time, it's also very overpowered that the map is spawning two or three new plague hearts every day. It's overpowered against us. And even with the Red Talon operators, it's still going to be a challenge to take out two or three plague hearts every single day. And I think if I want to actually make progress, I've got to take out one more than the plague hearts are spawning and the rate at which they're spawning so i think i might leave it in for now see how we okay. go okay i'm out but he does have a nice gun with him it's time for us to build some goodwill with the neighbors. and that always helps uh -huh. so i might leave you alone you got a minute to talk for five minutes just to enjoy the gameplay the pure gameplay going to use their brains to actually think, you know, while we still have them. OK, 
Okay, I lied. That was a five minutes. But I just wanted to jump in and say we've decided to go and attack some play cards now because I've realized they're spawning at a horrendous rate. And we need to do something about this. I better stay on my toes while I'm in plague territory. So, while we attack the plague hearts, I will try to leave you in peace. Enjoy the gameplay. Okay, I couldn't leave you alone again because, as you're about to see, this is where we learn about how well this growing threat mod is actually working. Because I think I explained in the last video that there are several versions of the mod, five actually. One of them just spawns a new play cards. But the main version actually affects the Plague Heart's health. And as you'll see now, this Plague okay. Heart has 800 health. So not only do we have to deal with new Plague Hearts on the map spawning every day, as our community standing increases, total community standing so too does the health of the plague hearts increase up to a maximum of 2000. Now dark side itself by the way this mod is created by the same author the same creator of dark side i think his name is neru i think it's neru so dark side the plague hearts in dark side spawn with 12 30, 1,230 health, I think it is. Or it's it's in the region of that. It might be 1,250 or 80 or something. 1,200 approximately. They also have horrific phasing elements, whereby if you get caught in the blast radius, basically if you're in the same house as the Plague Heart, when it phases and explodes, your character is most likely going to die. And... Not even that, if you're near it, even if you're on the outside of the house and you're anywhere near the Plague Heart when it phases, your character is quite likely to die. Now, that those elements are not implemented in this particular mod pack that we have together here, but the health is potentially going to almost effectively double or reach a maximum of 2,000. I don't know how long it takes, but it... It, it increases based on your total community standing and your standing increases based on your actions in the map. So killing Plague Hearts, leveling up characters, gaining influence and other uh, qualities. I think even getting things like allied enclaves, your total community standing increases. And so the Plague Hearts health will increase as we do that. So it's becoming... More and more likely that we may have bitten off well, more than we can chew. To the point where it's probably going to choke us. I can't keep this up. So I'm wondering here whether or not the play card is going to phase in a similar kind of format. Like one third health, two thirds health. I just know that I have to kind of save my resources here. I have laid down a mine already as a kind of backup. But I just want to take my time with these zombies. 
and uh, try not to use too many resources or contract full blood plague. So the question for the time being is when is the plague heart going to phase? As you can see, the Plague Heart's health bar in the top right, or health skull, isn't dropping. Although the health is, the number is. Skull, the red skull usually decreases with every hit. So I was getting the impression that it's probably not going to phase yet until we get it down to about 130 or 80 health, which is where it normally phases. 81, I think it might be. But I still wasn't sure. Thankfully, though, Plague Heart is only kind of attracting in four or five zombies at a time. No uh, freaks just yet. So we just carry on slowly chipping away. And dealing with the few zombies that do spawn in. So it was by now I'd basically got the picture. It's not going to phase. I'm practically sure now it's not going to phase. We've already knocked 300 health off this thing. Which is more than a third. And it hasn't phased. So I was pretty confident we're going to have to get it down to 130. Which is its standard health. And then we should start seeing the, plague, uh, the health bar drop. And it'll most likely be 80. And then 40. Roughly. Where we get the two phases. Still just dealing with it. quite, I guess, annoying zombies. It's not the whole insane horde. But, you know, it does uh, it does have an interesting little effect on the gameplay. Just a few little zombies spawning in. And you know, you just know, it's building up to the full-blown phase. Which is going to attract in basically multiple hordes and ferals. These zombies didn't give me too much trouble, but yeah, they were a bit more of just an annoyance rather than a real challenge. Wondering right now how, uh, if I added in the increased spawns mod, whether or not that would have an effect on this element of the game. Would it spawn in more zombies to attack us? Sometimes these mods play nicely together. Sometimes they just completely ignore Hello, each other and work off of vanilla mechanics. But other times they do kind of pick up on each other and work in synchronicity. Which would be fun.
Oh, we're getting close now. Closer. Three hundred health. And the whole time I'm here, I'm listening out for the feral roar. Just waiting, knowing. It is coming. It's coming for us. forgot about the C4. We may really have to go all out with our plague heart assault here in this uh, this mod pack in order to be able to make it. So that C4 is going to come in very handy. Here we go. We know we're getting close now, guys. We can feel it. And there he is. Hello, this is Lily Ritter from the network. As some of you know, I grew up in a place called Trumbull Valley. Here he comes. The valley has seen tough times like everywhere else. But it's bouncing back thanks to the strong folks who live there. Accidentally You're opening the map once again because of my new, you ridiculous new keybinds. And here is where I decided. I really, really, really need to change that keybind back. And it just took me a second. And I decided to just set it back to its very, very original M. I played with left alt, then I played with Z, and then I played with having it on control, but I found too often in a panic. I would be pressing the wrong keys and uh, inevitably, as you just saw, opening up my map. Because I was used to having left control as zoom. So uh, it just didn't work. So now left control is zoom again and M is... Just keep it simple. Sometimes we think these things are going to be good. Sometimes we think... and Sometimes it is good to start with, but then our brain in a, bo in a moment of panic... Time for a close encounter. relies on muscle memory and intuition as opposed to logic or, you know, recent memory. And so we end up making horrific mistakes that get us eaten. Okay, here is what you find out now. Play card health bar begins to drop. So we enter into the phase of the phases. The phases phase. Phases is? Phase plural. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Phase one. Let's see what this plague heart has in store for us. I have to rest. Okay, not so bad, not so bad. Now that worked great. Aha, okay. Yes, use the C4. May as well. We can't pick it back up again. So we may as well make use of it. It'd be nice if they implemented that sort of mechanic for State of Decay 3. Being able to pick up mines once you've placed them down. Slow 
down. I just dropped off a couple things I found while I was out. Screamer, now! Alrighty, we should be able to finish off this play cart. There's nothing left to salvage here. history now we can start claiming nearby places for ourselves i had no idea people actually listened to me around here i guess i can stay and we leveled up our, our morale a little bit just enough to take care of guppy it's quiet for now but as long as that play card is nearby this place won't ever feel safe we don't yet have anyone sufficient enough to lead our group. Skilled enough to take us uh, to to be a leader. And I really, I was looking at it at this point because I just wanted to know how, you know, when you say, when it says secure this territory on the map and it tells you how many plague hearts you have. Not going far with all this. Some good loot here. Where should I put this? Darkseid is responsible for the loot drops here. I think Darkseid does a great job with the loot tables on the map. We picked up a few plague samples there, which is great. Please don't let me be getting sick. I was just explaining here that this is my general kind of loadout that I run with. Energy drinks, regular painkillers, and I usually have Molotovs instead of the fuel bombs. Plague's on and I run with directions. usually five of each. Careful. I have a mod in that lets you take as many as you want in a stack. And I sort of just run, I don't overdo it, you know, four or five, usually five of each. Five energy drinks, five painkillers five molotovs and then uh, once my supplies are up a bit or once the, the multiple feral packs start spawning around the map then i tend to take the uh, the fuel bombs and sometimes upgrade the upgrade to the stims and uh, stronger painkillers i was just saying how too i like this backpack if you have a look at it it's a really good looking backpack this one it really suits the Red Talon characters too. And I was I was just wishing that they made this same model in a, a lighter variant because it looks so good. Compared to the hiking backpacks, which they're great in terms of their usability. But this one just looks so good in comparison. I would honestly prefer it if uh you know they they added in a couple of models of these better looking backpacks that were lighter even if they were 10 pounds or 9 pounds still not as good as the hiking backpacks but they just look better you know for aesthetic reasons and uh, as i was saying this is probably not a good idea and i didn't really want to do this but i think we might actually need gotta be a better way to do this to start heavily attacking these play carts because of how fast they seem to be spawning on the map. Because honestly, I really feel we're in a little bit of trouble with this, this playthrough. We may not be able to defeat the ever-growing arts. Ouch. 
medical attention here. So that was a bite. It was just not one of the grabbing bites. You know, it was an armless bite. But it still had the effect of giving us full blood plague, which I wasn't aware of. That's the first time I've encountered that since playing with this setup. So, yeah, that's a bit of a... Well, that's just something to be aware of. I'm not sure if the crawler zombies do the same. I don't even know if they do bite you, actually. And I needed to take a second here because I found I'd, I'd gone out of sync somehow. I, I'd been a bit taken aback by the, the threat of the ever-growing plague hearts, the discovery of how fast they were growing. And I needed to take a second to just breathe and reconnect because my key... My keystrokes were behind, my, my mouse movement was off, and I just needed to close my eyes and take a deep breath and just resynchronize. As 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 often often happens. But most often I tend to do that when I take a break. Like when I say I just just give me a second and I pause the recording and I stop and close my eyes and recenter, in a sense. This time I felt like I needed to do it, I don't know, just did it on camera. To, to gather myself into a cohesive, <laughs> coherent whole, you know? Relatively coherent, anyway. Alrighty, let's rock and roll. This time I said I'm not messing around. This time I'm not messing around, I'm just going to smash through these energy drinks i want to do whatever it takes to just keep pounding away we can't take our time we can't hang around if this map is spawning three or two or e even two play cards every day we cannot mess around we need to be really hammering away quite literally in order to get this done so uh, that's the that's the plan of attack this time round The particular position of this plague heart did allow for a kind of continued attack of the zombies and the heart without really stopping. Just a slight redirect every so often to knock down the zombie and this particular weapon too with its incredible, essentially 100% knockdown rate. Which I think it is. 100% knockdown rate. meant we could just continue to swing and even hitting them by accident would knock them over which might be something that we have to rely on for this series so obviously we did a much quicker job this time I think we chewed through four energy drinks up to now though so that's something we need to be aware of. We can't craft them yet. When we can, we can make 10 at a time, which is great. I think the mob that's responsible for that is called Crafting Rebalance. So I think you, you put in maybe one more of the material of the resource. Or double. Or I don't actually know, but you get more output now this is this I, I screwed up a lot here I screwed up a lot no more of that as you'll see again now <laughs> yes uh, terrible terrible aim I may as well have not aimed okay 
Time for a close encounter. Now that worked great. That one, that one did work great. The other two were not so great. But I'm just really kind of concerned it's with damaged. the fact just I need keep to keep an it. eye on my stamina resources, and my health is getting low. Here comes Mr. Farrell to say hello. The head. I do love these guns. I enjoy the lever action weapons the most. But in terms of efficiency, these horde breaker guns or the RTX weapons, nothing really compares. There are others that do compare but still these ones are just kind of the earliest easiest best so I've just used my last uh, energy drink I'm conscious of that at this point and of the fact it's now ultra dark It's very, very nearly pitch, pitch, as dark as it gets, pitch black. But it will be very soon before we know it. It is another extremely dangerous element of this mod pack. We can, uh, I'm not sure whether or not we can keep up with these plague That's hearts. At stuff. this point, I was just weighing it up again. I was trying to count them and weigh up how many there are. Jackpot. But, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm really no way unsure this. at this point as to whether or not this series is already lost in terms of its scope. I was hoping to maybe have to deal with maybe about 20 or so play cards in all. You know, if we start out with 13 and as we play the game, I was expecting maybe up to like 20 would have spawned by the time we'd finished. But clearly we're already at 19 and it's been, this is the third night. So that could be a little bit too we're in deep problematic. I think I may actually implement this uh, no plague heart, uh, this no plague your kind of dark side of the walking dead feature. I've been thinking about it throughout this video and as tough as that's going to be, I quite like it. I quite like the idea of it. I feel like it might balance out the uh, the morale, recruit the red talon showing up on our door every morning to give us a hand. Considering we will probably lose a lot of characters because we can't craft any kind of cure. We can't get bitten essentially more than once. And our characters will get bitten during sieges. Uh, so, you know, I quite like the idea of the way this is going, to be honest. Feels feels right, quite hardcore, but quite balanced. So I think I'll sit with that between episodes. I'll get the mod organized so that we can't, our infirmary is affected to, to not be able to craft them. And uh, the dark side amputate hey there. feature what do you say to a bit of bartering? is, is yeah, in the not? game. We bought a gardening textbook here because we lost our gardener early on. Our first, That's one of the of first stuff. three members of the community. We bought a big hank rifle here. I was looking at this thing here, this exterminators 22. 600 influence, which felt like a lot, considering it's only 22, 0.22 caliber, and the 357 we just bought, the big hank was only 175, I think, something like that, and uh, we decided to buy a little bit of, I think, I think we do, I think we do, yeah, I think we... We do buy some, yeah, we buy, buy a rucksack here anyway for the mission. 
Let's go. Why not? But also, I was discussing here how we do, because we don't pay for influence for bases and outposts, that we do end up, like, the influence isn't really a problem in this series. Uh, in this mod pack, you do end up with quite I'm a decent amount of influence. Okay. And so you do, you know, you're, you're more, you can be more liberal spending your money, essentially. I think they'll give us better prices in the future. And trade is the key to our survival. Which is nice, you know, I won't I won't play with that all the time, but this is just how I've been kind of relaxing over the last few weeks. I wanted to build a mod pack that was, you know, took away some of the grind because I, I don't have the, the longest attention span, especially when it comes to games. And, you know, I, I wanted to kind of speed up the gameplay a little bit without making it super overpowered, like too overpowered. Overpowered in some ways, but underpowered in other ways to, to kind of generate that middle ground balance again. And uh, I'm quite happy with the way it is so far. We also have the full house mod, which is part of Darkseid anyway, which allows all of our community members to be spawned in at the same time. That screamer can and a uh, I think the, the cap is about 15. 12 or 15 community members instead of 9. Although you still can't recruit from the legacy pool if your community is over nine members. So yeah, there's a lot of oh, there's, a, there's a lot going on with this mod pack, but it's it still feels quite quite nicely balanced, at least for the time being. I tend to, as I test these and play them these different packs as I'm going through them. If I notice there's a feature which is like, well, that feels too easy. That bit feels too hard. I, I look for a way to implement a new mod or to alter a mod or Glad to, see to take out movies. a mod Let's that, okay. that realigns the, the difficulty back to sort of neutral, you know? Not too easy, not hey, too stranger. hard. But just hard enough. It's got to be a challenge. And, nice uh, she's got scrum. Ticket. We're checking out here. These community members. Hey, yo, we don't recruit anyone, but it's nice to know that one of them has the scrum certification skill for that extra labor. But also, I think we just checked there. I might have missed it. One of these enclaves is giving us a boosted labor anyway, so we've got two extra labor now. So in terms of labor, we, we've got nothing to worry about. And the, a good point of that is... I'm not sure if this is vanilla or not, but when we upgrade our outposts to level 2, we lose a labor per outpost. So it's nice to have the extra labor. And now we are in the darkness, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to demonstrate here the difficulty of fighting even just a couple of zombies in the dark. How hard it is to keep track where they are because their eyes don't glow my arch nemesis there in the Looks corner now, rearing its ugly head nearby, the green screen of death it drives me crazy I have to ignore it often and, I, then I, and sometimes stuff. I can't but I try to just let go let go and let be a green screen. Alrighty, so we are coming up on the end of the episode now. And uh, hopefully my microphone doesn't die on me again. If it does, I'll continue to use it, I think. And if it does, I'll just do this one more time where I do a little bit of a voiceover. And uh, then I'll revert to using my other microphone, which just doesn't quite sound as good, but still is good enough. So I do appreciate your patience when it comes to this different style a video. I did a little bit of this sort of thing for the Stalker series that we did. Stalker Gamma series. Um, because I had the same issues with that hack. Uh, that, that game. So uh, please do bear with me if I have any audio difficulties. But look how dark this game is right now. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how the mod does this. How it makes it so dark. But um, it has an incredible effect. I was talking throughout this game. This episode a little bit about 
I think it was this episode about how I think State of Decay 3 should implement this. It's it's a hardcore feature for sure. But it just what it does to the gameplay and the feel of the game is is exceptional. I talked a little bit about also implementing speedier zombies at night time. You know, let's say the sunlight has some kind of effect on their system. Like it drains them of energy of some, some sort. Or just overwhelms their senses so they can't function as well. And then sure at I'd night time, when things are quieter, see darker, when we work and more still, their senses come alive, they're more active. But um, just knowing that at night time, the world truly does become lethal, even more lethal has an incredible effect on the fear factor of the game and the difficulty and the challenge of it and how much more strategic and tactical you have to be which obviously I struggle with because I'm a little bit impatient I'm I often you, like to just push and push and keep pushing and pushing and uh, often I push myself too far, too we hard, right too now. soon, we need help. to death but anyway, it's great fun. I really do love this game. It just constantly pulls me back in. Sucks me back in. And I happily allow myself to be sucked back into the world of State of Decay. Now uh, we fix up this little PPK here because, well, it's just a good little gun. It's our, it's the weapon that we have for the most ammo for at the moment, so. And nothing else we have fires 22 rounds. This thing is great. The Stormbringer. But uh, I think we leave, we leave this gun on our, ma on our character here. And I think we swap out. Do we swap out? Actually, I'm not sure if we swap out to another character or not. I think I want to take the Big Hank rifle out in our next playthrough, in our next episode. And we don't yet have any silencers, or we have, or somebody has, somebody already has a weapon with a silencer on it, I think. I think we picked up a silencer from a, an enclave before. And uh, here we go, looking at, at the map once again. It's at this point that I discover there is an actually an extra play card hidden away here which I hadn't seen before behind this behind there look there's two there so we still have 18 play cards there were actually 20 play cards earlier and we took two out and now we have 18 and uh, I think when that morning rolls around 6 a.m. 6 30 a.m. when the ticker the time ticks over and you you know you lose your food or you gain your meds or you gain your resources or whatever it is which happens twice a day. I think that's when we will see how many more plague hearts the map are spawned on the map. It'll be a lot easier to keep track when we have a hero instead of having to count them, but I'm kind of crapping my pants, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the potential of absolute community wipe or just absolute overwhelm from how many plague hearts are going to continue to spawn. And bear in mind, the plague spheres of influence spread, and so our outposts, potentials for outposts are affected, and blood plague zombies spawns increase as we go. So uh, this is turning out to be rather chewy, let's say. So thank you for joining me for this episode of State of Decay 2. Please do bear with me as we attempt to get this done. Bye for now.